Welcome back to Just One Question. I'm Nick Morgan, and I'm particularly honored and pleased today to have with us in this virtual space, David Howes. David is a musician by trade. Uh, he does the theater by day, which is interesting because uh, theater often happens at night. So he's got something figured out there that I never could. Mm -hmm. And as much time, he says, in the visual arts as possible. Uh, he's the executive director of Arts Emerson. And if you're from Boston or if you've been to Boston, you know how important Arts Emerson is in the in the art scene here in Boston. We can't get along without it. And part a big part of the reason why that is is because David House took over a few years ago and started really making Emerson important to us locally. Um, so welcome, David. Uh, check in. Tell us how you're doing. Uh, thanks, Nick. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning and all the listeners. Um, I am doing well, all things considered. You know, we've got a pandemic. We're in emotional, a moment of racial reckoning, and still we have to look forward. So I'm holding on to hope this morning and in the days to come. Amazing. So uh, I, I like the serenity and, 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 and that you're projecting. And I'm going to attribute a tiny bit of that to what we were talking about before I hit record, which is uh, I know a little, a little something special about you. You are a birder and I come from a long line of birders. I was never very good myself, but uh, um, I'm, I'm assuming that part of that meditative act of going out into nature and, and being one with the flora and fauna is giving you that serenity you're radiating today. It is certainly one of many tools that I employ to sort of keep saying, you know, during these days. And I, I call myself a birder with a lowercase b and not a capital B as a uh, relatively new person into the to the field. It is a privilege to sort of be at one with something that's bigger than oneself and to, yeah. to sort of uh, be able to contemplate. And that certainly is uh, one of the tools that I engage to sort of uh, keep going through these incredibly challenging times. Yeah, and those of us who are lucky enough to have access to nature, I know many people haven't, uh, know just uh, how fortunate that, that makes us to be able to get out and restore some serenity in the green places. In fact, yesterday I was out on a hike that was supposed to be about 20 minutes uh, in the sunshine, ended up being a two-hour hike in the rain, and yet and yet it was it, it was, was a beautiful good. thing yeah yeah uh yeah so there we are anyway anyway to to business here you uh you know and understand the arts you live the arts um and the arts are something we all turn to and expect to find there when times get tough and we need to understand what's happening to us we need to find some meaning in the in the difficulties of life um and of course, the arts have been hit particularly hard during this pandemic. So um, now that it's been with us for a while, um, tell us, uh, as you've made whatever transition you can to the virtual world and keeping arts alive, what's working in the virtual world and what isn't? Yeah, thanks. For the good, very good question. And um, I'll start by saying that I'm really, I've been encouraged by the swift and um, very elegant move into this virtual space, which we're calling sort of our, our new venue. At Arts Emerson, we have about seven venues that we manage, and now we have eight because we have this virtual <laughs> space. And, uh, you know, I say both from a programmatic as far as delivering the, the art, but also from a, um, an operational side. Um, it actually, this sort of dirt virtual space has allowed for you know surprisingly meaningful connection certainly between our teams between our artists between um, patrons and audience members it's allowed for you know better communication there are people on my team that i would see maybe once a month you know and now i get to see a couple of times a week because of this sort of new reality that we're in and the other thing that it's been really surprising um, is the level of increased engagement so I, I see that both in the nonprofit arts boards that I serve on, I see that in my own organization because it's much easier, we don't have the travel time to sort of turn on your computer and log into a meeting. Um, and so that engagement has increased and I find that both professionally, but also personally and being able to connect with family and friends with whom we haven't um, connected. So the, it's really working that well. Um, we've used this moment um, as a period of reimagination. So knowing that um, there are things that we are missing, there are things that we feel like we've lost, 
but to use that to honor those things, but also to think forward around what is the new way that we want to be able to engage. It's not a replacement in any way, but it is necessary to think about. We have to actually figure out how to continue because to your point, the arts have been always so much at the center of how we you know, get through difficult times, how, where we go for inspiration, where we go to be challenged, to find hope. And so we wanna make sure that we're able to continue to deliver that programming in a way um, that is meaningful to us and to our audience. At the same time that we have reimagined and sort of are sort of launching into this new virtual venue, it's very clear to me that this virtual space doesn't work for everybody. And, you know, there are people who, um, you know, I think about myself, I have two young boys, there's a challenge with online learning, but, you know, families without access uh, to technology that don't have the band um, uh, with to sort of stream these um, shows. There are also sort of the, the, the physical challenges of not being in proximity with each other. We as humans are inclined to be in community with each other. Mm -hmm. And we've had to create a new type of community here. But also there's this notion of isolation. You know, we are as sure. beings want to be together and many of us are feeling isolated in our spaces. So I recognize that there are challenges with this virtual space, but um, when it comes down to it, I feel like it's really our responsibility to engage in these virtual tools as a way to keep each other safe and to, you know, flatten this curve that seems to be up on the uptick as well. So it's really a responsibility to sort of engage as much as possible with all its joys and all of its challenges um, in this sort of virtual venue. Um, and you may hear some hope and optimism in my voice, and I, I have to say that I am not at all blinded to the incredible challenges that we are facing both economically, financially, socially, politically. This is a moment, um, to say the least, that's incredibly challenging, and that's an understatement. But I do see that I don't have the privilege of pessimism, right? I don't think we can sit and sort of, we have to mourn and grieve the things that we feel like we've lost, but with an eye toward the future of thinking that, you know, I'm not interested in going back to normal or to the good old days, because it's mm. clear to me that the good old days weren't good for everybody. Yeah. And in this gift of this gap in time that we have as a result of the pandemic and as a result of this moment of racial reckoning, there's a gift that we can sort of reflect and think about how do we look toward a future that's better for everybody, right? Where mm. people are seen, they feel like they belong, they're visible, not only in our arts venues and our art spaces, but in society writ large. And so that's what gives me sort of incredible hope um, and mm. as we look toward the future. And I know that this virtual space is just one of the tools that we'll have to employ and engage in new ways as we even think about what it means to go back into live performances that we miss deeply and, and dearly. Fantastic. Uh, I love the optimism and I really appreciate it because there are days when I've just been so discouraged thinking it's going to be a very long time before we can get back together in the ways that we're used to getting together, uh, whether in the kind of speaking world that I spend most of my time in or the arts world. So I really appreciate the optimism. I just want to, I can't resist asking one little follow-up question, which is, uh, do you think, so of course, as you alluded to, we're all looking forward to that day when we can get back into uh, public performance spaces again. Um, and you mentioned the virtual world as an eighth uh, stream or, or part mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the many venue, the many uh, venues that you have. How much of that, do you think you'll keep, or is that an unfair question? Uh, when, it's not at all unfair. And, and you know, there'll be this moment when finally we're all let out of, uh, out of our confinement and we can get back together, and, and I'm imagining we'll party in the streets for a while, but you know, once that settles down, how much of that, of that eighth venue do you think you'll keep? So we are, um, <clears throat> in this moment, we are planning to keep that and maintain that because when we do return to public spaces in the way that we were, not everyone will be ready to come back at the same pace. And we have a number of patrons who may have conditions or age that prevents them from feeling comfortable for returning. And so we want to make sure that we, um, because we believe that arts belong to everybody, we want to make sure that we're able to serve all of our audiences and multiple audiences in spite of their comfort to come back in those virtual spaces. So we're at this moment very committed to maintaining, that's why we're saying it's an eighth venue and yeah. not just an experiment. It's an eighth yeah. venue that we're, responsible for maintaining. So we're we're committed because we know that everyone's not going to be prepared to return at the same time. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're thinking through it in that in that profound way. So 
David Howes, thank you so much for joining Just One Question. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.